started the first peaceful revolution in Europe. Robert Schumann, very good. The first peaceful revolution. <laughs> we think it's normal, but it's not, you know. We have 70 years of peace here in Europe. This is the longest period ever, since the year zero, I might say. Because there has always been war, especially between what's now Germany and France. Always, constantly. So that's one. Then, the European Union is really a unique project. It's unique because there's no other project like this in world history. So that's interesting to know. Well, just no. It's not like uh, the United Nations. It's not like anything else. So this is also a point to, to remember. And then a third point. That, well, I can say many points. But OK, now, why did we start the European Union? Why? Why this revolution? Why this peaceful revolution? No. Answer is easy. Why? Pardon? We wanted to end the second, uh, the second World War, had finished, and it was a mess in Europe. There was misery all over, the threat of communism, we lost our colonies. It was all just really misery. So something had to be done. And then Robert Schumann came, he was the, the main architect of the European Unification Project. Uh, we will see later on, I will show you many pictures, it will be like a movie. And, um, <clears throat> but uh, I want to have said this already first, because he built this European Unification Project on three principles that also Professor Anne van Geusel mentioned. Professor Zwan also mentioned it in a different way, but the three points are reconciliation, very good, very reconciliation. Second point was solidarity. And the third point is subsidiarity. Well, okay, Professor Aldi von Rosa said unity, I say subsidiarity. And then there is another point that I want to add to this, and that is supranationality. And supranationality is, what does it mean? Above the nations. So it's above the interest, uh, the common interest, above the interest of each nation. And that only the very common interests. Uh, that should be then on uh, supranationally. Okay, then we have Europe today. And now I start with a little real movie that students made. Perhaps you can go to the, the board. The, uh, okay, and um, that student made last year. So every year, I tell you in the meantime, every year at the Hague University, we have um, annual International Schumann Student Congress. And then first students, learn about Schumann, about the way he thought, and so on and so forth. They look through Schumann's eyes at EU Today, and they write an essay about this. Then the winning essays are presented during the annual International Schumann Student Congress. It's really, it's so nice. And there are lots of students, only students, and then Dr. Potinsky, Professor Zwan, because we organize it with the, uh, the Lectorate of European Integration, European Studies, and the Polish Embassy, but now you're also <laughs> into our <laughs> university. So, uh, and uh, <laughs> next year will be the first lustrum, yeah, solidarity, will be the first lustrum, and we hope to celebrate in the Peace Palace. So, really, very nice. And now I will show you first the movie that students made, two students made last year for the third annual International Human Student Garden, because it gives an impression of what Europe is today. Europe, as we have known it for the past decades. A symbol of freedom, prosperity and change. The establishment of a political united Europe, the EU, enabled more than 500 million citizens of 28 member countries to live in peace and economical prosperity with a free movement of people, goods and capital. Centuries of armed conflicts and hate on the continent culminated in the most destructive and brutal war it ever faced. But one man had a vision of peace and solidarity. His name is Robert Schumann.
With his vision of effective solidarity, Robert Schuman became the founding father of the European Union. L'Europe n'a pas été faite. Nous avons eu la guerre. L'Europe ne se fera pas d'un coup, ni dans une construction d'ensemble. Elle se fera par des réalisations concrètes, créant d'abord une solidarité de fait. Today, European solidarity is facing enormous challenges. The refugee movement, climate change and the economic crisis left seemingly unsuperable disputes among the member states, while solidarity appears to be the narrative of the past. Students will present essays on these topics and together we will discuss what could Schumann's vision of solidarity tell us about the current situation? Is there any solidarity left? Let's find out together on the third annual Schumann Congress. Okay, in the meantime I explain to you the <coughs> uh, subsidiarity concept because I think some people don't have a clear idea about what subsidiarity means. Subsidiarity, I think the easiest way to com you can compare it with a kind of family. When you have a family, parents and children, and each child needs different kind of attention. Some children need more attention than others. Yeah? Some you need help more than others. And uh, you should not help too much, because if you help too much, they become pampered, they become lazy intellectually. Yeah? So, can be like that. Solidarity among member states is also like this. This is very loud, eh? So I'm going to tell you something. I go. I think I go a little bit down. You can see me well, don't you? Because if not, I've got those high heels and I'm standing that high. Um, uh, just to, I'm going to tell you something about Robert Schumann, and I also want to indicate the topicality of his thoughts. And. I thought, okay, you know, if you don't believe me, at least believe Jean-Claude Juncker, all those current people. And this is the, one of the sayings that he said, the European project is not outdated, it's more topical than ever. Next one, please. Do you mind pushing the button? Yeah. Schultz. So, hey, he is heading the European Parliament. Also saying, huh? uh, okay, the European unification who wakes us up and reminds us of what is really important peace, solidarity and mutual respect it's really important to deepen not what separates us but what unites us okay and we need courageous citizens what he said Tusk well something similar so now and then the next this is and this one I want to read fully because it's really very beautiful and I think he he also mentions the Pope these days he often mentions Robert Schumann I don't know if you heard about his speech in the European Parliament later on he received the Charlemagne Prize Award I'm just I'm going to read this out and later on we talk more huh? but Robert Schumann said Europe cannot be established in one go nor can it be achieved by a simple overall construction it will be created by concrete facts that initially create a solidarity of deeds. This is what we heard also in the movie, eh? in French. Just now, in our torn and broken wounded world, it is necessary to return to this solidarity of action, to the same concrete generosity which followed the Second World War. For, as Schumann further stated, the Peace, this is important, the peace of the world cannot be preserved without creative efforts which are of the magnitude of the dangers which threaten it. What Schumann did was supranational. This was really something that had never ever happened before. New kind of politics. The plans of the founding fathers, those heralds of peace and prophets of the future, are not overtaken. Today, more than ever, they are encouraging to build bridges and break down walls. Uh, so here we see this was Pope Francis de Prix Charlemagne last year. And there are several people who responded to this, not only Tusk and Schultz and, and Jean-Claude Juncker, also Federica Mogherini and others. Uh, because his words really, he touches really upon the quit, the essence of European unification, which is solidarity, is men. The Congress, the Schumann Congress is always called Schumann Solidarity. SC between brackets, human solidarity. When we speak about solidarity, it's about man. 
Also, it's about economics, but first, man. Man needs to be at the center. Yeah, for the European Unification Project, what Schumann saw, man at the center with his spiritual and social dimension, at the center of economic structures, at the center of political structures, at the center of social structures. If not, we are saying we are very, we are showing solidarity only economically if it benefits us. If not, no, then not. Politically, if it benefits us. And that's also what we heard in the former speeches. Solidarity is that you give yourself for others, not because of yourself. Also, perhaps it's also good for yourself. I think, for example, the example of the refugees, the, the migration, what we have, to help out these people is also, in the short and in the long run even, good for us. But that's another topic. We can speak about that later on. Then the next, please. Yeah, so here we also, we, uh, we answered all these questions. Only when? When did it start, the European Unification Project? Okay, yes, students, you know. Okay, 9th of May, 1950, very good. Yes, so this was uh, just for you to know. Then the next one, I, uh, later on I call. Human frame of reference, Europe today, a wake up call. So in that sense, I think it's really good we had a Brexit. It's really good that we have a person like Trump. But please let it shake us up and let us go to what is really important. What is the quit of everything that we are talking about? Yeah. And now here, this is just, and students have seen it perhaps already, this is EU in its good days. We also had the good days, you remember? We go fast. <laughs> EU in the bad days, here we see all the bad things that happened, terrorism, have fences, uh, the economic crisis, the, the um, lack of employment, Ukraine, Russia, populism, Brexit. Okay, yes, and uh, refugees, of course. So we see the two faces. Mm -hmm. eh? The beautiful young lady eh, here with her nose here, you, this is her necklace, and a not so beautiful lady with a fat nose and her mouth here. So this is the same Europe, yeah? and it has both capacities. It can be beautiful and it can be very ugly. So the next one, this is the crucial question, perhaps, I think my sister Frauke will remember it, because this is of Alice of Wonderland, yeah? also one of the, what would you tell me please, which way I ought to go from here? Well, that depends a good deal on where you want to get to. Well, I don't much care. Well, then it doesn't matter which way to go. <laughs> this is the situation we're in. We don't know. We are going anywhere. Some person says this, another person says this, and we just go with the flow. Next. So learn from the past. We can learn a lot because I'm going to tell you, I hope you will, I, I, at least I'm learning every time that I'm speaking about it also. Live in the present and believe in the future. Yeah, so it's also, uh, I hope I will give some hope in that sense yet. And the next, this is what we had after the Second World War. It was really a mess, as I just told you also. Uh, if there hadn't been the martial aid, what we also said, so that gave the instruments, had to work towards this reconciliation. And uh, if we hadn't had a unification project, probably we would have been in war again. Because we have been in war always, so why would we, wouldn't we have been in war now? Okay, next one. Uh, so this we all know. Oh yeah, also what is interesting, there was a mass migration, immigration from Western world to Australia. And then especially the young, strong people, they could go and work and live in Australia. So all these people were fleeing, huh? they were going away. Yeah. The <coughs> this is what we just said, what the Pope also um, uh, reminded us of, so pe world peace cannot be safeguarded without the making of creative efforts proportionate to the dangers with threatenness. We know now we all have these huge dangers, so we really have to be very creative. And you know, the funny thing is, to be creative is just to be ourselves. Europe, be yourself, I would like to say. I'll come to that later on. Yeah. And that's why Schumann started the inauguration of a new kind of politics that will probably be the strongest effort to protect our continent and to preserve the world from suicide. He started with these common interests that should be organized supranationally. So that there couldn't be war because the states would be dependent, one would be dependent on the other. Then, okay, yeah, next. Now, short story, I also fly through this. Um, the background of Robert Schumann, he was from Alsace-Lorraine. This, this is a region in northeast of France and was always fought about because it has got, what does it have? Coal. And 
Steel, very good, thank you. <laughs> coal and steel, so with coal and steel, what can you do? Make you can make war, okay, so you can make war. So always, uh, okay, before that was the Habsburg Empire, and then France, and okay, they were always fighting for this region. And Schumann already, as a teenager, he was thinking, how can we ever have peace on the European continent? He was already with this idea. And he was already thinking, of perhaps the thing that we are always fighting about, perhaps we should make those instruments of war instruments of peace. But that was only a thought. Later on, he worked it out. He uh, was born in Luxembourg, though. His family was from, Fran from alsace lorraine His father... Uh, changed nationality from French to German in the Prussian War, uh, because then it went to Germany. So Schumann was born a German. This is interesting. He was born a German. What happened after the First World War? Alsace-Lorraine went back to France. What happened to Schumann? He became a Frenchman. This is also interesting. Yeah? So he changed nationalities. Uh, in the meantime, he studied law. He did his PhD in Strasbourg, which was then Germany. And in 1911, his mom died. I think now you have to show the next one. Because his mom died, and that had a tremendous influence on his life. He was 26 years old. He was a lawyer, successful lawyer. The rich people liked him because he did his work well. The, young, the, the poor people liked him because he did, they, he did their work for free. And, um, but when his mom died, his dad died a really long time ago. Uh, he, he was wondering, what do I have to do now? And then, do I have, perhaps, what does God want from me? He asked himself. Perhaps priesthood? No, no. And then there was a friend of his who said, you know, the saints of the future will be saints in suit. You remain a lawyer. You are a good lawyer. You remain a lawyer. There will be a way for you that you will do well and that your, your aim in life is to do good. So... Please continue as a lawyer. And then he thought, okay, yeah, I continue as a lawyer. This was a crucial point. It's mentioned in all his, all the writings about Robert Schumann. So that's why I tell you. Next one, please. Well, there are more people with suits. Okay, yeah, here, then this, yeah. Yeah, and this is here. Today, it's Thomas of Aquinas. It's, that's a coincidence, eh? I mean, <laughs> today's the day of Thomas of Aquinas. He's a church uh, uh, teacher. And his way of thinking was Schumann's way of thinking also. He had a dialectic method of peace and reconciliation. States, people, whatever, can never be so far apart that there is no point that they can meet. There is always a common point of interest. And he said you have to work on that common point of interest and build on that and go from there. So this is what you also see with Germany and France. Their common interests were in coal and steel. So let's use coal and steel built on that. You know, you see it later on in this. Okay. Uh, to cut a long story short, he was chosen a representative in the French parliament. He defended the interest of Alsace-Lorraine a lot. And that's where you see the subsidiarity principle. Because it was different from the rest of France, and it still is. It had, for example, uh, the social system that Bismarck had introduced. And the people didn't want to get rid of that. They didn't want to lose it. They had religion at school. The rest of France not, because there was the laïcité, the strict separation. And, you know, they won't, didn't want to get rid of that. And so there were more things. So he, got, he, he arranged it that both parties were very happy. Azaz Lorraine could uh, keep its own interests, safeguard it, and the, and the rest, okay, it adapted all the other laws to the ones of the rest of France. And uh, then next, yes, this was, okay, now we have the Second World War. Schumann was the first person to, to be caught by the Gestapo as a parliamentarian. And he was put into prison for seven years, uh, seven, sorry, seven months. And there he read a lot and so on. And then after that, he was going to be sent to a concentration camp, but no. They said, no, we should try to get Schumann into our power, the Nazis thought, because he knows a lot, he can do a lot. So they put him on house arrest. Perhaps we can just conquer his thoughts, you know. And But no, he escaped. <laughs> so he escaped. And what did he do? Can you imagine? Because when he was a parliamentarian, huh, so from 1918 till 19. 
46, well, not, well, this time, no, not really. He was in prison, but okay, he always started a policy of reconciliation. When he escaped, he gave this course speeching, speech, uh, speaking about the need to reconcile with Germany. Can you imagine 1942, Hitler at its top, very powerful, huh? successes, one success after the other. Schumann saying we need a policy of reconciliation. The people didn't want to hear that. Really, it was really strange. He was wanted, an enormous amount of money was wanted to catch, to catch him and, uh, okay, then you will get the money. But no, nobody did, so. Okay, next one, here, communism. This was Schumann's leitmotiv, and I also mentioned it a lot of times in June when I was defending my thesis. Um, let's see, who wants to read it? Kasia, would you like to read it? No, I, I will read it, okay. We're all instruments, however imperfect, of a providence who uses them to accomplish grand designs which surpasses. So he sees every person as an instrument in the hands of providence. This certainty obliges us to a great deal of modesty, but also confers on us a serenity that our own personal experiences would not justify if we consider them from a purely human point of view. And so he saw in every person a huge capacity to, to grow, you know, and to develop. Yeah. Next. And this is precisely the sacrality, a uh, sacrality, I don't know if it's the right word, of the human person that he saw in every human person and that should govern the economic and the political structures and so on. Okay, he became Minister of Finance, he became Minister of Prime Minister at the NATO and the, uh, and, 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 uh, uh, what was it? The, of course, Marshall A. during two months, uh, uh, Prime Minister, when he was Prime Minister, and the, the Congress of The Hague was all in his brain. Here we have got the also four friends, eh? they were also friends, but what's interesting, left Schumann, de Gasperi, Italy, Adenauer, Germany, Monet. These three, they were all three of them of a conflict region, you know, all of borders. Schumann changed from German to, to French. De Gasperi from, Itali from Hang uh, Hungarian or Austrian to Italian. Uh, Adenauer remained a German, but he, wa he was from the Ruger eh, region, and um, Monet remained a French. Uh, the three of them were Catholics, and the three of them saw the, the Professor Adin Fogel mentioned uh, several times the, the Jewish Christian roots, and they also believed that this was the thing that was binding all the states, all the European states together. So that when we speak about the unification of Europe, this is the intringulis, the soul that is in everyone. So, next. And so we have to be really aware of this European heritage that we have. And then the next, please. This is, uh, okay. The European spirit signifies being conscious of belonging to a cultural family and to have a willingness to serve that community in the spirit of total mutuality without any hidden motives of hegemony or the selfish exploitation of others. Well, I think we can, you know, this could be very topical because what are we doing? We are just thinking about, about ourselves. Next. Our century, 20th century, that had witnessed the catastrophes resulting in the unending clash of nationalities and nationalisms must attempt to succeed in reconciling nations in a supranational association. What's happening now? You're falling back to nationalisms. Next. This would safeguard the diversity, so the, the diversity are there, and aspirations of each nation while coordinating them in the same manner as the regions are coordinated within the unity of the nation. So it's just, you know, Europe is like, a, like a, here we have got Drenthe and we have got Limburg and we have got Friesland and all those. They all belong to the Netherlands. Europe is like with all those states. They all belong to Europe. It's one big family. Then, uh, okay, we have the, as a Minister of Foreign Affairs, he comes to the Schumann Declaration. And the Schumann Declaration, okay, procures then the French-German reconciliation, effective solidarity, we know all these things, supranationality, political unification, and the uh, European, uh, the economic, uh, European community of coal and steel. Anyhow, so, um, and then a very important thing is that he always said that the European common interest should never ever go against the universal common interest. And that's what has happened during these last decades. Yeah? Because what, what did we do? Okay, now we go a little bit more to the topical, yeah, now we continue a little bit more. So these are the, the, the two, just to remember, pivotal role of man with his transcendence, spiritual social dimension in everything. 
Forgiveness and reconciliation, effective solidarity, subsidiarity and supranationality. Those are the key concepts of the European Unification Project. And it's completely new, it's unique, like ducks that just go into the water and they have to swim. They have never practiced before. Because it has not, yeah, okay. And then the solidarity principle, <laughs> here. Uh, we shall have to replace all the ten tendencies inherited from the past with a notion of solidarity. That is to say the conviction that the real interest of all lies in acknowledging and accepting the interdependency of all. Egoism does not pay anymore. You know, this, is, this could be said today, isn't it? This is precisely what each state is doing, what the populists are preaching. Next, uh, to, to, to go into. Then, what did he say about Africa? Well, this solidarity of production will be offered to the world as a whole. You see, as a whole? without distinction or exception, with the aim of contributing to raising living standards and to promoting peaceful achievements. With increased resources, Europe will be able to pursue the achievement of one of its essential tasks, namely the development of the African continent. Huh, what did we do? We sold our chicken bones that we didn't like, we sold them for very cheap prices in Africa. Yeah. What do we do now? We get all the uh, grains and I don't know what for our bio biofuel, which is very good, yeah, because our, the, the, it's good to take care of the climate, I'm not saying that, but the price of the rice and the grains and the whatever in those countries increases enormously and the economy has no chance to develop in those countries. So what do those people do? They come to Europe. Is it strange? They mi migrants, yes. And then what do we say? No, no, enter we don't want you. This is, if you think a little bit further, you know, the, I think his ideas, if we had worked with those ideas, we would have had a, a different world because the economy would have been developed. And, okay, we also would bring things like equality, man and woman, women, yeah, man and women, and the government, okay, we left them. I heard an expression, this was Joris Vorhofer. He said it about Libya, but I think we can also say it like this in general. Okay, I will say what he said about Libya, because now you get curious, perhaps. Okay, he said about Libya, we help with the NATO, and, 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 and France helped to, to bomb all this, to get rid of Gaddafi. And <coughs> what we did was take out the tumor and leave the patient bleeding on the, on the table. In a certain sense, I think what we did, I'm not saying that we are the bad ones only, because in Africa we had a dictator and so forth. But we went there, Africa, we took out what we wanted. We also gave some money to develop some things, but we didn't know where the money went to. I mean, ah, in the end. So, and we, so we, we, we uh, you can say that we let them also bleeding. We, we left them their independence. Okay, now you're independent, so do whatever you like. They had no idea. It took us ages to get democracy on the, from the ground here in Europe, you know? So, yeah. Then there, the dictatorship arises. Perhaps I'm, this is not scientifically proven as such, yeah? but I've read a lot and so on and so forth. I'm just, I'm just, you know, this is, I think if I follow Schumann's frame of mind, I can see those things. And what I do know is that Kunders, for example, he had already some uh, meetings with the, the how do you say, the, the head of states of African countries and Asian countries also to see how they can work together so that those migrants can go back perhaps and that they are, well, I don't know what, all those things and how we can help to them to develop economically and all those things. So now we are into this, but here you see Schumann said it already. So then the next one, please. Another thing that Schumann said was the integration should be in, with, in baby steps, little by little. If you give beef to a baby, it will throw up this beef. If, so, if the integration goes too fast with all those things that you said in the beginning so nicely about the, the I don't know how you call those things, it, uh, of the, the truck, uh, windscreen, wipers. windscreen wipers, uh, if you start with all these things, of course, it's, it's, it gets too much, you know, it's too much. Only the very necessary common interest, that's where you should, should work on, and then, uh, yeah. And this is something you know here. This hall cannot and must not remain an economic and technical enterprise. It needs a soul, the conscience of its historical affinities and of its responsibilities in the present and in the future, and a political will at the service of the same human ideal. What is it these days? A technical and economic enterprise. There is no soul. 
So, and then the thing falls apart. Yeah. Well, it can fall apart. So, uh, another thing that is very, I think, very beautiful. Is there any volunteer to read? Yes. Philip, you want to read it? Very good. Thank you. Um, shall I just read the entire thing? Yes, yeah, okay. um, Brotherhood Beyond Borders. What Europe wants is to uplift the ri rigidity of its borders. They should become the lines of contact where the material and cultural exchanges take place. They define the particular tasks, responsibilities and in innovations proper to each country, taking into account as well the problems all countries together and even the continents face and thus foster solidarity. Thank you so much. You said, I think your name is But this is very good. You see, this is very topical, isn't it? <coughs> I mean, we're speaking about and even the continents. So the problems all countries together, even the continents, face and thus foster, foster solidarity. Next one, please, Arne. No, 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 because I think the next oh, one is for... Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, no, no, this one, no, this one, wait, what's into the next? The, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, okay, yes. Sorry. Serving humanity. Uh, serving humanity is a duty equal to the one uh, dictated by our loyalty to, to the nation. The economy, um, yeah, the economy capitalism lent itself too easily to the methods of the egoistic uh, exploitation and neglected the meaning of human responsibility. Yeah, so I, well, I, I just want to say that, of course, it's good to love your own country. That's also what Schumann said. It's good to defend also the identity of one's country. But it's not good if it goes against the common interest of others, you know? That's our responsibility. So what I want to say, topicality of Schumann's Europe and his frame of reference gives insight in reason of current problems. Do you see this or not? It's just me that I'm saying this. <laughs> do, you, do you sympathize with me then in that sense that you can see that his way of thinking explains, in a certain sense, populism? Because the, the integration has gone too fast and people think like, oh, they take away my job, they, and what do I have to do with all those immigrants here? And is it a, uh, So, do you see this or don't you see this? Some do, others don't. Okay, so now never mind, that's up to you then. <laughs> I, 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 do see, I do see that the, 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 the most important thing is that we have forgotten who is man. And that a refugee is just as much a person as you and I are, and that we forgot about men in our economic dealings. When we make negotiations, when we set up a treaty, when we do whatever we do, we just think what's useful for us, what's perhaps useful for you, it's all utilitarianism. And if you think of what's good for men, sometimes it might be not so good for you, apparently. Perhaps we have to go a little bit back, but in the end, it's better for all of us. And you become more human, you know, by giving yourself to others, you become more human yourself also. I think I have to stop or something. Still 25 years to go. No, 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 that's not true. No, this is, no, this is not true, no. It is, I can go on and on and on and on. No, but there are some that are really very, very, but I, I think you will be tired of all this reading, eh? but they are so beautiful. Uh, wait, do the, do the last one then, the, the former one, that's okay. The last one, no. yeah, okay, oh yeah, of the Pope, yeah, that's nice. So, yeah, you can read the last one. Yes, the third one on the road. Too short. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, man at the core. A time has come to work together in building a Europe which revolves not around the economy, but around the, s the sacredness of the human person, around ina inalienable values. A Europe which cares for, defends, and protects man, every man and woman. A Europe which bestrides the earth surely and securely, a precious point of reference for all humanity.
Yeah, I, I hardly dare to say anything more after the Pope, you know, because this was the Pope. <laughs> Who am I to say it again? But okay, what is needed is a paradigm shift. Now we, our view is, is it economically okay or not? Yes, it benefits us, so let's do it. Or if it, if it is technologically, because now already we're at the level of technology, yeah? So first we make man a kind of an instrument of economics, and now we are making man an instrument of technology, which is even worse because we become a robot and we, we, we decide if we want blue eyes, blah, 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 and so on. So we are right on that level. So a, a fundamental paradigm shift is needed, yeah, in the sense that we, man, every man, is extremely precious and extremely important. And that we put that at the core, at the heart of the economy, of politics, of social structures, or whatever we ourselves do also. And we ourselves have to reflect on it also in our own dealings, eh? because I'm saying this, this is easy to say so. <laughs> and what does this mean in practice? Well, okay, I said already, for example, the thing of the bones, eh? the, the, the chicken bones and so on and so forth. Perhaps we should not well, I'm sure we should, we should stop this. Perhaps we have to give them something to those people that send them out because now they don't get anything. Yeah, but okay, let's pay them. It's okay, no problem. Let's not be afraid to give a lot. I think I, I stop because if I see more slides, I will speak more and I think I have to stop. Thank you, Martin.